welcome back. So, we start our fourth lecture in this module. So, in the previous lecture what we have seen is we have seen how to write the partition function for a polyatomic molecule. We also derived the thermodynamic properties namely internal energy, entropy, then enthalpy and other properties. So, today what we are going to do is we come to an important aspect that is how to determine the normal mode of vibration. So, we are talking about the vibrational modes or rotational modes. So, rotational modes we have already seen, now we come to the normal modes of vibration. So, we will find out how quantitatively we can determine these normal modes. So, this lecture is reported to normal mode analysis. So, what I will do is that I will first do a normal mode analysis for a linear triatomic molecule and I will discuss the asymmetric and the symmetric stretching. Then uh, overall I will also discuss what is a nonlinear triatomic molecule. So, in the linear triatomic molecule I will take the example of carbon dioxide while in the nonlinear triatomic molecule I will just briefly describe the water molecule. So, the existence of unique vibrational modes we have seen there are many vibrational modes there is a bending mode, there is stretching, then it is asymmetric stretching they are available in triatomic or bigger molecules this has been acknowledged. So, we have seen in the previous lecture that these type of vibration is, are there. So, it is within the internal structure of the molecule ok. However, the specific nature of these modes and the methods for their identifications have not been thoroughly examined. So, what are these modes? What are the minimum number of modes? What are the degree of freedom? How do we define the normal modes? That has not been discussed or defined. So, the discussion on identification of a comprehensive collection. So, comprehensive collection means all the vibration and energy modes which are also known as normal modes that fully represent all potential vibrations of a molecule. So, what we do in order to notice this we consider a string based model. The string based model I have already shown you. So, what we will do is for a triatomic molecule we will consider you have three masses which are connected to each other. This is mass 1, this is mass 2 and this is mass 3. So, what I will do I will just put it x 1, x 2 and x 3 ok. So, let us suppose all the masses are equal in this first to make it simpler m m m represent the 3 masses 1 2 3 and they let us assume for simplification that all the masses are of similar that is they are of same widths. So, and uh, suppose all these are connected via a spring. So, its force constants we will discuss later, but let us suppose at equilibrium both the distances of the spring is equal. So, from uh, mass 2 to mass 1 or mass 2 to mass 3 the distance is B and this is we will call as the equilibrium position of all the atoms. So, in this 3 atom case we will say we have put some reference coordinates that is x 1, x 2, x 3. So, what we will do we will only consider the vibrations the only vibrations along the axis of the molecules will be considered. So, we will only do a 2D type of analysis, two dimensional analysis, we will not take the three dimensional the other vibrations. So, we consider the only those vibrations which is lying along the axis of the molecule. The molecule here is a triatomic linear molecule. So, let us define and find out the normal modes associated with the with the linear vibration along the axis of the molecule. So, in this case what is the potential energy? First, let us write the potential energy, the potential energy of the system potential energy of the system is. So, what is the potential energy? What you do is that is k into x square we know for a string and so, I can write down P e as equal to k upon 2. Now, k is a force constant. I assume the force constants between 1 and 2 is same as between 2 and 3. So, for that I can write down x 2 minus x 1 minus b whole square and then again k into 2 x 3 minus x 2 minus b into whole square. Just for your sake I will just draw the 3 atoms. So, this is x 1, this is x 2, this is x 3. So, these are the dimensions basically on the x axis x 1 
x2, x3 are the relative dimensions. So, this is b and this is b. So, you will have to take the two displacements, displacements of x2 and x3 if you consider x1 as the starting point. So, that is what I have written with respect to x2, I have written the starting point as x2 minus x1 that is the distance at any instant of time which is the difference between the distances x2 up to this distance x2 minus x1 minus of the equilibrium distance b into whole square. So, half k x square. Similarly, for x3 what I will do? I will subtract a distance x2 and then what it is? I will just make the square of it. So, square of it is x3 minus x2 minus b whole square. So, b is the equilibrium bond length which I have shown here and you have x3 minus x2 is the distances at any instant of time. So, what is the displacement of this spring at any instant of time with respect to the equilibrium bond distance we are writing in terms of potential energy. Now, when we are completed this expression what we will do? We can also write the kinetic energy, kinetic energy of the system. So, what is the kinetic energy of the system? That will be equal to Ke equals to m by 2. So, let us suppose the velocities of individual atoms are v1, v2, v3. So, it will be v1 square plus v2 square plus v3 square, okay. The kinetic energy of the system. So, you have the expressions for potential energy and the kinetic energy. So, we all know where so, you can define the distances you know with this manner d x i by d t the differentiation of the position with respect to time. Well, these are all relative numbers. So, can we define any relative dimensionless quantity? So, that I can define in terms of displacement rather than in terms of subtraction of two distances. So, what I will do? I will write another expression the distances from its equilibrium position in this manner x i minus x i 0. So, it means when I write eta 1 equal be equal be x 1 minus x 1 0. So, x 1 0 is its equilibrium position and x 1 is the distance at any instant of time. Similarly, we can write eta 2 as x 2 minus x 2 0. It is distance f atom 2 by minus distance of atom 2 at equilibrium position. Likewise, then what I will do? I will try to convert equation, equation 1 with this definition. So, obviously, when I write this definition, it means that I can write this x 2 0 minus x 1 0 is equals to x 3 0 minus x 2 0 which is equal to b. This is also true. So, looking at this expression, I like to convert this potential energy in terms of eta. So, if I write the potential energy in terms of eta, so from I write here from equation 1 I get P e equal to k by 2 eta 2 minus eta 1 whole square into plus k by 2 into eta 3 minus eta 2 whole square. Okay. So, I have written in terms of relative distances eta 2, eta 1, eta 3 and again eta 2. And so, obviously, your kinetic energy will also take the form. So, from equation 2, I can write down the kinetic energy as m by 2, then you take 1 whole square plus So, it means eta 1 dot means with respect to temperature, it is differentiated. Similarly, with respect to temperature again, I am sorry it is not with respect to temperature, it is with respect to time, with time again with time. So, this is the total kinetic energy. Okay. So, now we have got expressions of both potential energy and kinetic energy with respect to relative distances eta i. So, the classical equation of motion states that what is the classical equation of motion? You know that that is the Newton's laws of motion. So, you say m into n 1 double differentiation with respect to temperature with respect to time is equal to m into d 2 of n i by d t square. This is the Newton's laws of motion with respect to time that is acceleration mass into acceleration you get the force which is equal to I have written in terms of relative distances. So, it means this is nothing but the force f i the force acting on the ith atom 
and this force acting on the ith atom can also be found from this expression. You take the derivative of the potential energy term with respect to the coordinate. So, if you have the expression of potential energy, do a derivative with respect to a coordinate, in this case it is a relative coordinate, so you will get the negative of the force. So, that force is been acted on the ith atom or ith molecule. So, this is the Newton's laws of motion. So, let us convert then all the expression in terms of all the three. So, let us write all the expressions now for all the atoms. So, for atom 1, it will follow this expression. atom 1. So, this is the force. So, it is actually what it is if I want to write the force into acceleration is nothing but you have the potential energy expression in the previous slide you do a derivative with respect to eta 1. So, you will get k into eta 2 minus eta 1. Okay. Same thing what you do force into the second atom is equal to or do with respect to eta 2. Now, when you do with respect to eta 2, you have two expressions of potential energy. In both the expressions, you have eta 2 present. So, the expression will be a sum of two terms. So, in this case, it will be minus k into eta 2 minus eta 1 plus k into eta 3 minus eta 2. Okay. Again, in the for the third atom, what is the net force applied on it or the net acceleration it will be force applied on atom 3 again it will be having only terms of n3 and n2 so you will have k into n3 minus n2 okay this is the expression so you write so uh, you get these three expressions corresponding to the three atoms now to solve these three simultaneously we need to make some approximation that is we assume this to be a periodic motion because it is a string it will have a periodic motion. So, the equation of motion for such a periodic motion is given as m so this is another variable which because of periodic motion I am trying to differentiate between the linear motion. So, in terms of periodic motion, this is given as double differential of this into 4 pi m, this is the frequency square. So, this is the expression which you have for a periodic motion. So, the solution of this is the solution of this is equal to n of if I want to replace this expression with this expression, analogy of this I can write down as in terms of omega square. Omega square you know what it is, I will not repeat here. So, this is angular frequency, so minus omega square m into eta i. So, I have converted all the expression in terms of angular motion. So, because of the spring, it is a periodic motion and the solution of this can be given with this expression C 1 sin of 2 pi. Okay. So, for a periodic motion, we have assumed thus expression to be like this in terms of frequencies, which if converted to the set of equation, the equations take the form m into eta i double differential into equals to minus omega square m n i. So, let us rewrite the all the three expressions in terms of this omega square. So, equations transform to, so if I want to transform this equation, it will be m into 1 of this equals to k into so I'll just write the original equation so that it will help you to understand this is nothing but the previous equations I am writing again so plus k into n3 minus n2 then you have mass into the variable double differential equal to minus k to n3 minus n2. So, this gets transformed from that expression to this expression. So, it will be minus m omega square eta 1 minus k of n2 minus n1 equals to 0. This is the first expression. Then minus m 
omega square n2 minus k n2 minus n1 then you have minus so this will be plus this will be minus k because i'm taking it on the left hand side k into n3 minus n2 equals to 0 and the third expression this will be taking the form minus m omega square theta 3 plus k n3 minus n2 eta 2 equal to 0 okay so i have substituted all the expressions in terms of omega square so what i have did is i just converted this this lhs the left hand side in terms of minus m omega square eta 1 and just took this right hand side to the left hand side to make the right hand side equal to 0. So, this is then converted in terms of angular frequencies. So, when you have converted this angular frequency you can write in a matrix form. So, if I write in matrix form I can write in this manner. So, I can write k minus m omega square then minus k 0 then you have minus k 2 k minus m omega square minus k write the coefficients of the all the three expressions k minus m omega square so this is i write in terms of matrix form so it is will be multiplied by what it will be multiplied by the eta values so it will be multiplied by eta 1 eta 2 and eta 3 so it will give you what it will give you 0 Okay. So, I have just wrote the coefficients of eta 1 because if you expand this you will write the coefficients of eta 1, eta 2, eta 3 in matrix form. Now, we have to solve this x matrix form. So, this is only solvable when this determinant is equal to 0. So, let us see. So, this gets solved when the determinant k minus m omega square minus k 0 minus k 2 k minus m omega square minus k 0 k minus m omega square. So, this this determinant needs to be equal to 0 solve for this determinant. If you solve for this determinant you will get the omega square k square minus omega square m into 3 m k minus omega square m square equals to 0. Okay? So, if you solve the determinant you will get this expression. So, you have to now solve for omega. So, if you solve for omega, so if you see there will be uh, omega 4 then again square term omega 6. So, it will have 6 solution, but many solutions are similar it means it will be plus minus of each other with different phases. So, overall I can write down the solution as omega 1 is 0, omega 2 as 0, 2 solutions. Then this omega 3 I can write plus minus, plus minus of root of k by m then omega 4 of plus minus this will be same as plus minus root of 3k by m. Okay? So, you have got the solutions as omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, omega 4. So, you have 6 solutions. So, I have written here 6 solution 1, 2, 3 has both the solution in terms of plus and minus 4 also has 2 solutions in terms of plus and minus. So, this is the 4 solution. Now, what we will do? We will substitute the value of omega in the equations. So, what we will do these omega 2 values and omega 1 values are same. We will put one value as 0, another value as root of k by m, another value as root of 3 k by m and then see what is the resultant expression we get in terms of displacement. So, first let us suppose equal to omega equal to 0. This if you see just below it will be derived as a free translational motion. What does that mean? So, if you substitute all the values on the three expressions, you will get the first expression as omega is 0. So, everything take taken care of. Then the second expression will be this and the third expression is I have inserted omega equal to 0 on the three equation. So, it means what you have is if I take from this expression, it means I get is n1 equal to n2 equal to n3. 
it implies that if I have the three atom system if I draw it it means all the atoms are experiencing force, force in the same direction with equal magnitude. So, they are displaced they are displaced about its center of mass position equally all the atoms and they are also experience a similar force. So, this is what you call as free translational. free translational motion. So, this takes place when this omega is equal to 0. So, just keep in mind they are all same magnitude, force is of same magnitude and direction both. So, when you solve for those expressions, so you get the three atoms experience similar force and moving in the same direction this is for omega equal to 0. Now, let us substitute the value of omega plus minus root of k by n. If you do that, you will get minus k of omega 1 minus k of n 2 minus n 1 equals to 0. The relations between eta 2 and eta 1. So, the second expression takes the form k in a k eta 2 plus k into eta 2 minus eta 1 minus k into eta 3 minus eta 2 equals to 0. Then minus k the third expression takes the form okay equals to 0. Now, from these three expressions if you solve them or look carefully you will see there is a relation between eta 1, eta 2, eta 3. What is that relation? The relation is eta 1 equal to minus eta 3 and then eta 2 equal to 0. So, if you see from the first expression, from this expression, you solve for this expression, from this expression, you will get eta 1 equal to minus eta 3. Okay. And uh, if you take up all the expressions together, the most probable solution is eta 1 equal to minus eta 3 and, and eta 2 equal to 0. Okay. So, it means if I want to, uh, I am sorry, this expression is, this expression is wrong. This will be 1. Actually, if you solve this expression minus k into eta 1 minus k into n eta 2. So, from this expression, you will get eta 2 equal to 0. So, if this eta 2 equal to 0, you can substitute anywhere in this expression, you substitute eta 2 equal to 0. So, you will get the relation between eta 1 and eta 3. So, that is what you get eta 1 equal to minus eta 3. So, these are the two possible solution and the relation between eta 1, eta 2 and eta 3. So, it means what does that mean? It means if I want to draw that spring diagram again, both are experiences force while the center one is stationary. The atoms at the end are experiencing equal but opposite force while the stationary atom is stationary. So, this is atom 1, atom 2, atom 3. So, the negative sign implies that the force is opposite on both the atoms 1 and 3. So, this is called symmetric stretching and this symmetric stretching you can observe from the IR spectra. For example, for this symmetric stretching in case of carbon dioxide malo, this omega value is 1314 centimeter. So, it means if I want to convert this omega 1 in terms of frequency, this omega 1, then I can have to multiply this wave number. This omega 1 is nothing but wave number into speed of light. Okay. So, inverse of wave number obviously is the frequency. If you do that, you will find out 1314 centimeter inverse into 3 into 10 to the power of 10 centimeters per second. So, if you solve for it, you will get the frequency. The frequency will be 3.93 into 10 raised to the power of 13 second inverse. This is the frequency. 
and then you can from this omega this 13.14 I need not to explain that you can also get the vibrational temperature what is that expression I taught you earlier it is nothing but 1.4387 into omega so you just multiply this 1.4387 into 1314 so you will get as equal to close to 1890 Kelvin so this is the vibrational temperature so whatever we are doing here it has a meaning so we have getting the frequencies these frequencies are observed for such type of motion okay now let us do the other part that is let us substitute with root of 3k by m the third solution so if you do that the expressions take the form so it will be minus 3k eta 1 minus k of eta 2 minus eta 1 equal to 0 the first expression second expression takes the form eta 2 plus k into eta 2 minus eta 1 minus k eta 3 minus eta 2 is equal to 0 and the third equation takes the form So, from this expression, from the first expression, we get N2 equal to minus 2N1, okay. If you open up the brackets, you will get this relation. Similarly, if you open up this bracket, you will get N2 equal to eta1 minus eta3. And the third expression, if you simplify, you will get So, from these three expression, I can write a relation which is equal to eta 1 equal to minus 2 times eta, this is eta 2 minus 2 times eta 1 equals to minus 2 times eta 3. So, it means two atoms have twice the force but in opposite direction than atom 2. So, if I want to draw in terms of string diagram, this implies this so it means I will make a bigger arrow like this so the magnitude of the length of the arrow determines the force so the force exerted on the outer atoms that is atom 1 and atom 3 is half the force exerted on atom 2 so atom 2 has the so 2 times the force exerted on atom 1 or atom 3 is equal to the force exerted on atom 2 but in opposite direction so these two forces acting on atom 1 and atom 2 are in the same direction while the force acting on the central atom is in the opposite direction twice of magnitude this is called the asymmetric stretching this should be asymmetric stretching asymmetric stretching earlier was symmetric this is asymmetric this takes a more energy so it is frequency is also more 2 3 3 5 centimeters inverse for co2 because it is a twice the pressure twice the force as compared to 1 and 3 again you can do this you get the theta v is equal to 1.4387 into 2335 this becomes the vibrational temperature which is close to 3360 kelvin so these are frequencies again observed for carbon dioxide it is called as asymmetric stretching so what are the conclusions we draw from this analysis that is in the case of linear molecule where atoms are confined in a straight line because in the starting of the lecture I told that you assume that the atoms are confined in a single axis we are seeing only the two dimensional analysis not three dimensional so for 2D there are three distinct modes of vibration what are the three a translational mode with zero angular frequency so three distinct mode means three different vibrational modes I am not talking about the rotational or the translational. So, translational means within the entire molecule. So, it means as I told you this is that motion where all experience the same force okay, with zero angular frequency. Then symmetrical stretching. So, as I told you, so if you have three atoms, so you will have stretching this way, both equal opposite. Okay. This is the symmetrical stretching. Now, asymmetric stretching, just now I explained, it is you have force on two of the atoms 
which are same that is the direction is same for both the atoms while the second one the direction is almost double. So, these are the three distinct mode of motion in terms of vibrational. But atoms inside an actual linear molecule are not strictly confined to motion along a single axis that is true. It is not along a single axis but along all the axis. So, if an analysis were conducted on the three dimensional motion of a molecule it will reveal the presence of 9 modes of motion because it will be 3 into n atoms. So, it will be 3 n degrees of freedom or 3 into 3 9 modes okay, in the case of a triatomic molecule. So, what are the 9 modes? The 9 modes will be 3 transitional degrees of motion freedom, then 2 rotational degrees of freedom and then the 4 vibrational degrees of freedom. And what are those? Just now we will, we will discuss. The 2 rotating out of those 9, 2 rotating motions occur along axis that are perpendicular to the axis of the molecule. Remember, this is only for linear molecule. 2 of the vibrational mode we have just now discussed, what are those 2? These are the asymmetric these are the asymmetric and the symmetric ok asymmetric and symmetric because the free translational is actually a translational motion. So, in this case two of the vibrational mode has been defined as asymmetric and symmetric, but there are four vibrational modes out of those four two have been discussed. So, what are the remaining two? The remaining two depends upon the symmetric bending modes. So, there are four vibrational motion, symmetric motion, asymmetric motion, then bending motion and out of this bending there are two motion. One is towards the plane, one is outside inwards the plane. So, it means one mode occurs within a plane while the other mode is perpendicular to the plane. So, if I want to represent these something like this. So, it is if I make the three atoms. or so it's something like bending so bending means as i told you you are bending this entire angle so if you are bending this entire this particular three atomic system it means you are bending one within the plane this is the plane where I am writing, another is the bending which is perpendicular to this plane which I cannot show you on this particular screen that is it is towards you it is bending. So, both this bending motion are type of vibrational mode. So, you have four vibrational mode. So, these are the two the remaining two are asymmetric and symmetric. So, four vibrational mode, two rotating mode, four plus two is six and the remaining is 3 which are the translational modes which I have not already discussed that is the entire molecule it can move along its x, y and z coordinate. So, for carbon dioxide the two these particular mode this particular bending mode are observed at 663 and for this vibration corresponding to a two vibrational motion this theta v is close to 954 Kelvin ok. It means your omega 3 this value omega 3 is if you notice it is less than that of asymmetric or symmetric because the fact is when you are drawing when you have such a structure like this arrangement you provide more amount of energy to stretch these atoms as compared to bend these atoms. So, if you have more amount of energy it means the omega value will be more as compared to bending. So, bending motion requires lesser energy as compared to the stretching energy. So, that is why the frequencies of stretching or asymmetric will be more and among asymmetric and symmetric asymmetric will be more because of the unequal force distribution. So, let us see what is a triatomic molecule which is non-linear. In a triatomic molecule that is non-linear it possesses a total of 9 degrees of freedom. Same thing because you have 3 atoms. So, it will be 3 into n it is 9 degrees of freedom. But the 9 degrees are allocated in the following manner. One is the translational degree of motion because you know it is a 3 independent direction of the center of mass x, y and z where it can move. So, these are the 3 directions where the entire molecule can move x, y, z. Then there are 3 degrees of freedom associated with rotation because you have another extra rotation because it is non-linear. So, it can rotate along all the 3 axis and then there are 3 vibrational degrees of freedom. 
So we will take the example of water where the molecule possess two rotating degrees of freedom which I have already shown that are oriented perpendicular to its axis. I have discussed it for water where the third rotational degree is aligned along the axis. So for water you will be having something like this. I will show it in the next slide. The schematic I will show below will illustrate the three vibrational mode because rotational modes I have already covered. So this I will discuss the symmetric mode, bending mode, asymmetric stretching for water molecule. The three of the rotational modes of water I have discussed that is uh, in the rotational spectra. So for this, for water these three are like this. So this is one. the symmetric stretching, then the bending mode. So this is symmetric stretching. So the directions actually implies why it is symmetric because equal amount of force is applied on all the atoms. Okay. So this particular spectra is seen at a uh, wave number of 3, 5. 8, 3 centimeter inverse while this is the bending. So, in the bending this is pulled here while these two are pulled in this direction. So, this is the bending mode. So, the central atom is pulled towards us and the other two atoms are pulled backwards. So, this is the bending so the bending mode this is visible at because as I told you it requires lesser energy to bend a molecule. So, it is 1592 centimeter inverse. Then there is the asymmetric stretching in the three atoms for the asymmetric stretching. So, I will be put it in random direction. Let us say I put it in this in this direction, this in this direction, this third atom in other direction. So, random force assignments. So, based on that this is also called this is called the asymmetric bending. the asymmetric bending and this is around shown in 3725 centimeter inverse. So like this we have shown uh, for water 3 atoms but as the number of atoms increases so do the number of degrees of freedom then the mathematics become more complex. So likewise all the vibrational temperatures or wave numbers are derived. So, it will become more cumbersome to take more than 3 atoms. So, you can look up the standard books for derivation, but derivation will follow in a similar manner. Only thing is the matrix size will keep on increasing, solution will be becoming more complicated. So, I will conclude my lecture here. So, I will again try ask you to go to this NPTEL course which is the physical and electrochemical characterization in chemical engineering where I have discussed the IR spectra in detail. And obviously as always this is our textbook Sandler's book you can go through the different vibrational states of the atom and also review the previous equations for partition function. Thank you. Mm -hmm.